I don't think that I ever had any encounter or any reason to even think about bats growing up. Nature has always been there somewhere in my childhood. One of my memories growing up is of me just thinking about forests. If you meet Ben in the field, he's kind of the best, one of the best people to be in the field with. But, uh, heavily, heavily understudied in Nigeria. You know, poorly known, poorly studied. We're starting to grow that interest now. I mean, because of some of the successes we've had, Ben and I, it, it seems like we've signaled to people, hey, bats are cool creatures, you know. I really believe that if we were to conduct a lot more studies in the field, we're really going to start to understand how our bats are doing in the wild. My research focuses on why bats differ across the landscape. So if you're at the top of the mountain and at the base, different bat species. Why? I was always fascinated by just, you know, being able to climb up mountains. It felt like its own kind of vacation, even though bat research can never be considered a vacation. <laughs> Afi Mountain itself is actually perhaps one of the steepest uh, mountains kind of in the area. And, th and that makes it really difficult to climb. This is not a walk in the park. <laughs> I can't walk. Oh, yeah. All right. Move on. What's really striking about these areas is the landscape is always spectacular. It's lots of just terrific views of, you know, sometimes it's the cloud floating over the mountain or floating on the side of it, and it's like really just visually stimulating. It feels like the mountain wants to reward you. Caves are valuable as shelters for bats, where they will also find mates and also raise their young. Bats are shy. They are shy creatures. A, a good number of species would not want to be around humans or even other species. So we're trying to um, survey these caves and um, know the type of bats that are in this cave. So, so this is an ultrasound bat detector. What it does is it listens to the sounds that bats make and it detects it. 
So it's ultrasound because bats echolocate at a very high frequency. So human beings can't hear bats. It's more efficient to navigate with um, ultrasound, echolocation. So that's what this detector is able to pick up. When they fly, they emit sound, and the reflection of that sound, they analyze it and are able to know what object is in front of them, the kind of object. And this is how they forage, this is how they feed, catch insects at mid-flight. Um, it's a very, um, very, very efficient system. Now, bats roosting in caves are often threatened by lots of things. When my field team and I first discovered a really rare species, the short tail rounded bat, that had not been seen in the wild for 45 years, you know, it was suddenly, oh, we've got this huge responsibility now that we have to take on board. You encounter a rare species, you've got, you've got to save it, you've got that responsibility to protect it. The biggest turning point in my career was being told that there was a field course. It was just the big shift I needed in my career because that's where I fell in love with that. Myself and a friend, the first time we went to the field, it was quite disastrous. We really did not get along. At the end of that field trip, he simply just told me, look, I can't do this. And I'm like, well, you can't abandon me in the middle of a project. So next thing he calls me up and says, oh, there's this guy, he's a friend. And then he basically just introduced us. I was very, very sure. Um... Um, and, and we work perfectly together. We are we were best of friends, actually, before we started dating. The bad, bad couple? If anything, it's, it's, it's cool for me. It's just another way of um, advertising the bats and making bats look more cool. People could find love with bats. And... That gives me some kind of fulfillment. And of course, we are a very cool couple, so it's like a free advert for the bats. <laughs> what we now know is that the bat is threatened by two primary human-induced uh, threats, one of which is wildfires. And of course, under climate change, fires have become even more intense and more frequent. The second threat to this tiny bat species that hadn't been seen in the last 45 years is cave disturbance. The perception about bats in Nigeria and the rest of Africa is a bit complex. Because in one breath, a lot of people, most people think bats are evil and witches. In another breath, they eat them. Where we are right now, bats are hunted in their thousands, sometimes up to 4,000 individuals in one single cave. In this community, for example, they hunt bats because they like it. It's the meat. So you then have to provide things like alternative livelihood that can bring money to the community and also offer them alternative. Bad studies and conservation is very challenging um, because, of course, Bats are nocturnal, so because of that, you have to most times walk all night. So it's a very exciting but challenging um, kind of research to do.
You know, you're, you're literally working day and night. At night, you trap bats. You process them, you identify them, what species they are. Take lots of measurements, you know. The length of the forearm, the length of the legs, the size of the head, you know. I take photos and record the echolocation sound calls that they make. You know, so it can be quite involving. So all of this you do at night because that's when bats are active, right? They're nocturnal. There are times you, you want to give up. You tend to think, um, are we just here, um, like somebody said, documenting the end? Because when we got into bat research and bat conservation, we couldn't find people um, to, to look up to in um, Nigeria and um, West Africa. It was very difficult um, getting materials and getting mentored. So this is what we want the next generation of enthusiastic bat researchers to avoid, not to go through. We want to be remembered as the, the couple who are raising West African students and bat conservationists. To study bats, you first need to know where they are and what they are. And then you start to study other things like what do they eat? How do they find what they eat? Does one species use one mechanism apart from the other? What plants do they pollinate or disperse? Lots and lots of interesting things that we haven't discovered about bats yet. So these discoveries that we've made here, you know, finding a rare small population of the short rounded bats, or discovering 10 bat species um, that are new to Nigeria. That is just the beginning. We're barely, barely scratching the surface. So much, so much to find out about bats. The real name. I got it.